Oh, praise the most high. So tonight's topic is called Wisdom which multiplied bitterness. Wisdom which multiplied bitterness. Okay, all praise to the most high. Let's open up with the book of John chapter 8, verse 32. John 8, 32. Let's read that. The book of Luke. The book of John. John, John, John 8, 32. Pay attention. John 8, verse 32. Let's start there. Come on. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. And Wait. ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So this is Christ speaking. He says, we, the children of Israel, we shall know the truth, and the truth will set us free. So the truth, as we know, is God's commandments, right? Watch this. Give me John 7, 16. Okay, John chapter 7, verse 16. Watch this. The book of John, chapter 7, verse 16. Wait. Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine. But he's, he's that sent me. But he's that sent me. He says his doctrine is not his, but him, but he is that sent him. Who sent, the, who sent Christ? The most High God. He's the one that sent our Lord and Savior down here to teach us his doctrine. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Job chapter 11. Okay. Job chapter 11 verse 4. Watch this. The book of Job, chapter 11, and verse 4. Read. For thou hast said, my doctrine is pure. My doctrine is what? My doctrine is pure. That my doctrine is pure. So the doctrine that, the, that Christ brought, the doctrine that Christ taught was not his and it is pure because it's coming from the most High God. Understand that. Read again. Come on. The book of Job, chapter 11. Verse 4, Ready? for thou hast said, my doctrine is pure, and mm -hmm. I am clean in thine eyes. You see that thing? The doctrine of the Most High God that is pure is going to make us clean in the eyes of the Most High God. That's what he's saying right there. What is that doctrine that is pure? Give me that in um, Proverbs chapter 4. Okay, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 2. Let's read that. He says, my doctrine is pure, and I am clean in thine eyes, because the doctrine of the Most High God is what's going to make us clean in the eyes out of the most high. Read that. Proverbs 4 verse 2. Read. The book of Proverbs chapter 4 verse 2. For Come I on. give you good doctrine. Forsake mm -hmm. you not my law. You see that thing? The law says he gave us good doctrine, which is pure. You understand? And that doctrine is his laws. Because God's commandments, they are pure. You understand? Watch this. Give me Psalms 19 verse 8. Psalms 19 verse 8. Watch this. 7, the we're book. gonna read down. Start of verse 7, we're gonna read down. Read the book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. Mm -hmm. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting. Perfect. Hold on, perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect. God's commandments is pure. That is dog, that's that is doctrine, it's pure. Read. Come on. Converting the soul. Doing what? Converting the soul. Converting the soul is going to change your thinking. Read on. The testimony of the Lord is so. Mm -hmm. Making wise the simple. Next verse. Come on. The statutes of the Lord are right. Mm -hmm. Rejoicing the heart. That's where joy is going to come from. Joy is going to come from where? Joy is going to come from the most High God's commandments. His statutes which are right. When you're unhappy, it means you're not keeping the commandments. When you're depressed, it means you're not keeping the commandments. You understand? When your life is messed up, you are miserable, it's because you're not keeping God's commandments and you're not happy doing it. That's why you don't have the spirit of joy. Read it again. The book of Proverbs. The book of Psalms. Psalms 19 verse 8. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 8. Read. The statutes of the Lord are right. Mm -hmm. Rejoicing the heart. Rejoicing the heart. Come on. The commandment of the Lord is pure, mm -hmm. enlightening the eyes. You see that thing? Meaning what? The Lord is going to open your spiritual eyes. He says the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. So God's laws is what's going to open our eyes, our spiritual eyes. So we may be able to see the things that we missed, the things that we did not see, the things that wasn't obvious. 
is the Lord that the, the Lord is the one that opens our understanding. You understand? When we keep his commandments, when we find joy in keeping his laws, that's the only time when the Lord will open your understanding. That's the only time when the Lord will enlighten your eyes. Understand that thing. Now watch this. Give me Revelation chapter 10 verse 9 now. Revelation 10 verse 9. Read that. The book of Revelations, chapter 10, verse 9. Come on. And I went unto the angel, mm -hmm. and he said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Now read that again. Now this is John the Revelator in the island of Patmos. So the, the angel is visiting John. You understand? Having a conversation with him. Sent by who? Christ. Read that again, verse 9. The book of Revelation, chapter 10, verse 9. And I went unto the angel mm -hmm. and said unto him, give me the little book. He says, give me the little book. Come on. And he said unto me, take it mm -hmm. and eat it up. He says, take this little book and eat it up, right? And it shall make thy belly bitter. Mm -hmm. But it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. So this is, take the little book, eat it up. It's going to make your belly bitter, but it will be in your mouth sweet as honey. Next verse. Go ahead. Verses 10. Mm -hmm. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate right? it up. Mm -hmm. And it was in my mouth, sweet as honey. Come on. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. So now we're going to deal with what, what is being said here, what is being explained here. We're going to deal with that. What is this little book that was given to John and he was commanded to eat it up? You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah 8 verse 1. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 1. Let's read that. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 1. Read. Moreover, the Lord said unto me, mm -hmm. Take thee a great roll. A what? And take thee a great roll. He says, Take thee a great roll. So the Lord is speaking to Isaiah, said, Listen. Take thee a great roll. Go ahead. Read. And write in it mm -hmm. with a man's pen concerning Mahesha al Hashbaz. Concerning Mahesha al Aspaz. Mahesha al Ashbaz. He says, Take thee a great roll and write in it with a man's pen. Now, watch this. The roll is a scroll. You understand? The roll is a scroll. This roll or a scroll. Is made up of what? Give me that in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. We're dealing with a little book in Revelation 10, verse 9 and 10. Read that. 2 Book of Timothy chapter 4, verse 19. Verse 13, verse 13. 2 Timothy 4, verse 13. Come on. 2 Book of Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. Read. The cloak that I left at Troas with Kapos. Mm -hmm. Come on. When thou comest, bring with thee and mm -hmm. the books. And the what? And the books. And the books. And the books. And the books. Go ahead. But especially the parchments. But especially the parchments. Parchment means paper. So these books were made out of paper. So that's the roll. That's the scroll. They were made out of paper. You understand? And the script was written on those, those scrolls. You understand? On the parchment. Today we call it the Bible. You understand? From the Greek word biblios to mean a collection of writings. You understand? So the little book in Revelation 10 verse 9 and 10 is making reference to the Bible. Today that's what it's called. The Bible. Watch this. Give me Isaiah 30 verse 8. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 8. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 8. Go ahead. Now go. Write it before them in a table. Mm -hmm. And note it in a book. And do what? And note it in a book. 
and noted in a book, in a book. The book is the Bible, the little book that John the Revelator was given. Go ahead. That it may be for the time to come forever mm. and ever. So that time, the time to come is now in these last days for us. You understand? Give me Joshua 1 verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Read that. Come on. The book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. Mm -hmm. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. It says this book of the law. So the Bible is the book of the law. That's the little book, the roll, the scroll, the parchment. Okay. Read that part again. The book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 8. Read. This book of the law. Mm -hmm. Shall not depart out of thy mouth. Stop right there. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. So the little book that the angel gave to John is the laws of God. The book of the laws. You understand? Our forefathers always had the books. And the most High God gave them the spirit to write those books for the last days. For us this day. From the time when we was in Egypt. When we came out of Egypt. Excuse me. In the wilderness. Unto this day. You understand? In these last days. That we have the books of the laws with us. You understand? So that's the little book. Now go back to Revelation 10 verse 9 again. Read verse 10. Revelation 10 and verse 10. Once again. The book of Revelations. Chapter 10 verses 10. Read. And I took the little book out mm -hmm. of the angel's hand. Read. And ate it up. And did what? And ate it up. So he says he took the little book out of the angel's hand. That's the Bible. It says, and he ate it up. You understand? Because the angel commanded him what to do with that little book. Take it and eat it up. Okay, give me Isaiah 34 verse 16. What does it mean to eat it up? He says, take the book and eat it up. Isaiah 34 verse 16. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 34, verses 16. Read. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord mm -hmm. and read. Read. No one of these shall fail. Mm -hmm. None shall want a mate. Mm -hmm. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. Now read the verse again, verse 16. There's something I wonder of that verse right there. Come on. The book of Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. Read. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Stop right there. It says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. In Revelation, is called the little book. You understand? In Isaiah, it's called the rock. Okay? So here it says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. So now we have the books. You understand? But it says you must read it. Seek out of the book of the Lord and read. Seek it out of the little book and read. That's how you eat it up. You understand? He's not saying literally take the Bible, take the paper and put it in your mouth. No, it means learn of it. Read, study it. Okay? 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. Read that. 2 Book of Timothy chapter 2 verses 15. Read. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Stop right there. You see what the Bible is saying? It's a study to show thyself approved unto God. Study, study, study to show thyself approved unto the Most High God. So when it says, take the book, the little book, and eat it up, it means study it. You understand? Study this book. Everything that's in this Bible, you must study it. Soak it up in your spirit. Okay? Give me that in 2 Maccabees 2 verse 23. 2 Maccabees chapter 2 verse 23. Read that. Come on. Second book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verses 23. Come on. All these things I say, being declared by Jason of Cyrene mm -hmm. in five books, we will essay to abridge in one volume. So now the subject matters about the books. You understand? The little books. The little books, the Bible, the book of the law. You understand? 
jumped out because they girl, what were they doing? They were compiling the books into one volume. You understand? For our benefit, for the time to come forever and ever. Like it says in Isaiah 30, verse 8. Now jump down to verse 25. Watch this. What are we supposed to do with the books that our forefathers painstakingly set down to put it together in the spirit of Christ for our benefit in these last days? Read that. Come on. Second book of Maka, please. Chapter 2, verse 25. Read. We have been careful that they that will read may have delight. That they that will what? That they, that they that will read may have delight. For they that will read, they that will eat up the words that are written in this book, they that will read will have delight, may have delight because they adventure, they will have delight when they read it. You understand? Right. And that they that are desirous to commit to memory might mm. have ease. You see that thing? They that are desirous to commit to memory might have ease. The reason why some of you are struggling to commit the scriptures to memory is because you don't have joy doing it. It's a burden to you. You understand? It doesn't feel good. It feels like a job that you got to do. You're not doing it because your spirit says, I got to do this thing because I love the most high. I love to hear everything that's written in this book. If you have that spirit, you better pray to the most high God to get rid of that spirit, to put the spirit of joy in your mind. Understand that? Read again verse 25. Come on. Second book of Maka, please. Chapter 2, verse 25. Read. Right? We have been careful that they that will read may have delight. That they that will read may have delight. Go ahead. And that they that are desirous to commit to memory might have ease. So if you have the desire to commit the things that you are reading, what you are eating, you understand? If you have the desire to commit them to memory, you're going to have ease in this truth. Meaning what? Because you have the spirit of joy. Nobody has to put a gun to your head. Read. And that all into whose hands it comes might have profit. You see that thing? Because when it comes to those that have delight to commit these things that are written to memory, guess what? They, it will be profitable to them. That's why some of you, I don't even bother to follow you around. I'm not doing that no more. You understand? Sisters too, because sisters have the same spirit as well. I'm not following nobody. Okay? Because a lot of you, you want to be cuddled. Come on, little no, no. I'm not doing that no more. Mm -mm. Because why? Because it's like, if you, don't, if you don't understand why you're here, if you don't understand that you have to do this for your benefit and the benefit of your nation, I can't force you to do that thing. Understand that. Read that thing again. Second Maccabees 2, verse 25 again. I want this verse Second, to sink in. Read it again. Come on. Second book of Maccabees, chapter 2, verse 25. Read. We have been careful that they that will read may have delight. Uh -huh. We have been careful because our forefathers, they sat down, you understand? They put these books together for our benefit this day. Read. And that they that are desirous to commit to memory might have ease. So if you have desire to commit these books, the laws that are written in this book to memory, you're going to have ease reading it, eating up the book. Read. And that all into whose hand it, it comes might have profit. Because the only time it will be profitable to you is if we, you apply what is written. You understand? This is the only book that you, the only way for you to understand what it says, you must do what it says. That's the only way. And then that's when the spirit of joy will jump on you. Why? Because you are doing what? You are putting effort to apply this. The, the wisdom of the Lord is not going to fall on your lap. You have to labor. You have to show yourself worthy to receive the understanding that's written. That's why you have to what? You have to sacrifice the stuff that you used to do that was not profitable for you or for your nation. You have to sacrifice those things. You understand? And be the man of the most high God. Be that woman of the Lord that the Lord will delight in. Understand that thing. Now watch this. Okay. Go back to where he was at now. Revelation 10 verse 10 again. Okay. Read. The book of Revelations, chapter 10, verses 10. You know what? Before you get there, give me, give me Deuteronomy 8, real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 8, read verse 3 for me. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to, to hunger. Read. And fed thee with men, which thou knowest not. 
Come on. Neither did thy fathers know mm -hmm. that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. You see what he's saying right there? That man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Because when, when John the Revelator was told, eat the, eat, eat the little book, he was being told, learn this book, study it, commit it to memory, have delight doing it. You understand? Now, watch this. Give me that thing, John 4, verse 29, real quick. John 4, verse 29. Okay. John chapter 4, verse 29. You know what? Hmm. Before I go there, okay, give me, give me Matthew 4. Read Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Okay. The book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 4. Wait. But he answered and said, mm -hmm. it is written. Come on. Man shall not live by bread alone, mm -hmm. but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So Christ is quoting Moses in Deuteronomy 8. Christ is quoting Moses right here. So now watch this. Give me that in John 4 now, verse 29. John chapter 4, verse 29. Remember, John the Revelator was told, listen, eat the raw. Eat it up. Okay. Read that. John 4, verse 29. The book of John, chapter 4, verses 29. Read. Come, see a man which mm. told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Is not this the Christ? Come on. Then they went out of the city and came unto him. They came unto Christ. Read on. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed, saying, Master, eat. So now they're saying to Christ, he says, have something to eat. Master, eat. Go ahead. But he said unto them, mm -hmm. I have meat to eat that ye know not of. He says, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. So guess what? What we read in Matthew 4, verse 4, Deuteronomy 8, verse 3, that's what Christ is making reference to. He's not making reference to the actual meat here. Okay, read. That's why it says, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Read. Because they were pestered him and said, listen, master, eat. They have something to eat. Read. Therefore said the disciples one to another. Mm -hmm. And any man brought him out to eat? He says, have any man brought him out to eat? Meaning, has anybody given him food? Because we never seen him eat. That's why we want him to eat. Read. Jesus said unto them, my mm -hmm. need is to do the will of him that sent me Come and on. to finish his work. You see that thing? You see what he's saying right there? He says, my need is to do the will of him that sent me. So what is, it, what is the need that Christ was making reference to? The will of him that sent him. That's the need he's talking about. Read that again, verse 34. The book of John chapter 4, verse 34. Jesus said right? unto him, Jesus mm -hmm. said unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. So now watch this. Give me that in Psalms 40. Okay, give me Psalms 40 verse 8. So we see the will of the father because the meat Christ is making reference to is the will of his father. You understand? Read that. Psalms 40 verse 8. The book of Psalms. Chapter 40, verse 8. Read. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. So the will of the Father is his laws. I delight to do thy will, yea, O my God, thy law is within my heart. So the will of the Father, which is the meat that Christ was making reference to, is the commandments of the Most High God. You understand? Okay. Now, let's go back now. Go back to Revelation 10, verse 10 again. The book of Revelations, chapter 10, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. He says, I ate it up, meaning I learned it. I learned it. Read. 
and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I eaten it, my belly was bitter. So it says, it was in my mouth sweet as honey, and as soon as I'd eaten it, my belly was bitter. Now, remember it says, hey, eat it up, meaning learn of this book, okay? It says, it was in my mouth sweet as honey. Give me the book of Proverbs 24, verse 13. It was in my mouth sweet as honey. Give me Proverbs chapter 24, verse 13. Let's read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 24, verse 13. Mm -hmm. My son, eat thou honey, mm -hmm. because it is good. Stop right there. And he says, my son, eat thou honey, because it is good. Go ahead. Oh, the no. book. Of, Come on. I'm looking at it. Keep reading. The book, the book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 14, verse mm -hmm. 13. My son, Come on. eat thou honey, because it is good. And the honeycomb, which is sweet to thy taste. And the honeycomb, which is sweet to thy taste. He says, my son, eat thou honey because it is good. Give me that in First Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. First Timothy 1, verse 8. He says, my son, eat thou honey because it is good. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. Read that. First book of Timothy, chapter one, verse eight. Read. But we know that the law is good. Read that again. First book of Timothy, chapter one, verse eight. But mm -hmm. we know that the law is good. We know that the law is good. The law is good. The law is good. Go back to where he was at now. Proverbs 24. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 13 again. Read. The book of Proverbs chapter 24, verse 13. Mm -hmm. My son, eat thou honey, because it is good. You see that thing? The honey is the laws of God. The honey is the laws of God. You understand? Read. Because it is good. Mm -hmm. And the honeycomb, which is sweet to thy taste. And the honeycomb, which is sweet to thy taste. Watch this. Next verse. Read on. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. You see that thing? So he's letting you know what this honey is that is what that is good. He says, so shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. Meaning what? The same way honey is good to thy taste, so is the so shall the knowledge of wisdom be to thy soul. It's going to be sweet to thy soul. That's what he's saying right there. Go ahead. When thou was founded, mm -hmm. there, there shall be a reward. He says, then there shall be a reward, which is what? The kingdom of heaven on earth. Read. And thy expectation shall not be cut off. Meaning what? The most High God is going to deliver on his promises. That's what King Solomon is teaching us right there. Give me the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 103. Psalms 119, verse 103. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verses 103. Mm -hmm. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Read. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. You see that thing? Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. So the words of the Most High God, they are sweeter than honey to our mouth. You understand? Because guess what? When you came into this truth, you were, you were brought to your remembrance who you are, that you are a Jew. You are not a Negro. You are not a Bantu. You're not a Tsonga. You're not a baby. No, <clears throat> you are a Jew. Give me that in Romans chapter one, verse seven. Okay. When we came into this truth, this was sweet to our taste. Okay. Read that. Romans, Romans chapter two and verse 17. Romans two, verse 17. Read that. The book of Romans chapter two, verse 17. Come on. Behold, thou art called a Jew. Thou art called a Negro. Thou art called the Jew. No, thou art called a Bantu. Thou art called the Jew. No, a Hispanic. Thou art called a Jew. A Puerto Rican. Behold, thou art called the Jew. You see what God calls us? God says we are Jews. Behold, thou art called a Jew. Go ahead. And restest in the law. 
and we rest in the law because the laws of God was given unto us. Come on. And make us thy boast of God. We boast that the Lord is our father. You understand? The most high God is only for the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what, that's what brings joy to our spirits. And then that's sweet to our taste. You understand? Give me Baruch 2 verse 30. Baruch chapter 2 verse 30. Okay. This is sweet to the taste right here. Read that. Baruch 2 verse 30. The book of Baruch, chapter 2, verse 30. Mm -hmm. For I knew that they would not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people. Really? But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. You are reading too slow. Come on, read verse 30 again. The book of Baruch, chapter 2, verse 30. For I knew that they would not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people. But... Really? In the land of the captivities, they shall remember themselves. So in the lands of our captivity, now we remember who we are. We remember that we are the 12 tribes of Israel, okay? In the lands of our captivity, South Africa, because that's where we are now on this side of the earth. Go ahead. And shall know that I am the Lord, their God. Mm -hmm. For I will give them an heart and ears to hear. So the Lord says he's going to open our spiritual ears, you understand, and soften our minds. That's what the Lord is saying right there. He says, and shall know that I am the Lord, their God, because the prophets will bring it out on the streets. You understand that you are the children of Israel. You're not what they taught you that you are. You understand? Come on. And they shall praise me in the land of the captivity and think upon my name. Mm -hmm. So now we are praising the Lord in the lands of our captivity. Because now we remember who we are. We remember who the most High God is to us. You understand? He's not the God of all nations. He's the God of Israel and none else. That's free to our taste. That salvation is only for the 12 tribes of Israel. Give me Romans 3 verse 1 real quick. Okay, come on. Romans 3 and verse 1. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 1. Mm -hmm. What advantage then had the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Come on. Much every way. Chiefly because there unto them were committed the oracles of God. You see that thing? That right there is suit to our taste because unto us was committed the oracles of God. And that's why we have an advantage over all nations on earth. That's sweet to our mouth. You understand? Salvation is only for us. And we are God's chosen people. That's beautiful to, you know, you understand? That's beautiful to hear. That brings joy to your spirit. Go back to Revelation 10, verse 10 again. The book of Revelations, chapter 10, verse 10. Come on. And I took the little book out of the angel's mm -hmm. hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. He says, but as soon as I eat in this book, my belly was bitter. Remember, he says, eat the book. You understand? It became sweet in our mouths. You understand? But he says, as soon as I eat in it, as soon as I land of it, you understand? It says, my belly was bitter. What is the belly? Give me that in John 7, 38. He says, you know what? Give me Hosea 12, verse 10 first. Hosea 12, verse 10. He says, as soon as I eat in it, my belly was bitter. Read that. Hosea 12 and verse 10. The book of Hosea chapter 12, verse 10. Mm -hmm. I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. You see what he's saying? He says, and I he says what? I have multiplied visions and used similitudes meaning illustrated stories. One thing to, me, to, to mean something else, you understand, by the ministry of the prophets. Now watch this. So when he says, and as soon as I eaten it, my belly was better. He's not talking about your actual stomach. Yeah, okay, watch this. John 7, 38. Read that. John chapter 7, verse 38. Because Christ said something here, okay? There's something deep in what he said. John chapter 7, verse 38. Read that. The book of John, chapter 7. Verses 38. Mm -hmm. He that believeth on me, as the scripture had said, 
out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So now if we believe on Christ as it is written, that's what it means when it says, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Because the scripture, in order for you to hear, to believe on Christ as the scripture has said, where must it register? Does it register in your actual stomach or in your mind? It registers in your mind. You understand? It registers in your mind. So the belly is not talking about your actual stomach. It's talking about your mind, your spirit. Read that again, verse 38. The book of John, chapter 7, verse 38. He Read. that believeth on me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of his belly, out of his mind shall flow rivers of living water. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Okay, watch this. Go back to where he was at. Revelation 10, verse 10 again. The book of Revelations, chapter 10, verse 10. Mm -hmm. And I took up the little book, and I took the little book out of the angel's hand and Wait. ate it up. Come on. And it was in my mouth, sweet as honey. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. As soon as I learned it, my belly was bitter. My mind was bitter. Okay. So now, is it just learning it that makes your belly to be bitter or your mind to be bitter? No, no, not just learning it. Because the bitterness will come in when you have to do what? Watch this. Give me Sarah 21 verse 12. Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. 21 verse 12. Okay. The book of Ecclesiasticus of 21 verse 12. Read. Right? He that is not wise will not be taught. Mm -hmm. But there is a wisdom which multiplieth bitterness. But there is a wisdom which multiplied bitterness. There is a wisdom which multiplied bitterness. Because it says, as soon as I eaten it, my belly was bitter. My mind was bitter. Because the wisdom that came with the little book was that some of it made your mind to be bitter. So, but what about it will make your mind bitter? We're going to get to that. Give me Job 7 verse 11. Give me Job chapter 7 verse 11. Watch this. Job 7 verse 11. Let's read that. The book of Job, chapter 7, verse 11. Read. Therefore, I will not refrain my mouth. Mm -hmm. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. He says, I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. Read on. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. You see what he's saying? I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Because what deals with your soul? The laws of God. You understand? God's commandments deals with your soul. So that bitterness of your soul, it comes from where? It comes from God's commandments. Give me Psalms 19 verse 7. God's commandments deals with your soul, your spirit. That's why he says, I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. We're going to find out why is he complaining in the bitterness of his soul. Okay, Psalms 19 verse 7. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. Mm -hmm. The law of the Lord is perfect. Come on. Converting the soul. You see that thing? The laws of God is what's going to deal with your conscience. It's going to deal with your soul, your mind. Read. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Mm -hmm. Making wise the simple. Making wise the simple. Because from moving from simplicity to, 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 what, to being wise, it's a process. And it's a painful process, by the way. Why? Be the reason why it says, as soon as I eaten it, my belly was bitter, is because of the process to move from nigger to go, from, from home to a wife. You understand? From a girl to a woman. It's a process. That's where the bitterness comes in, because that means you have to do what? You have to apply the laws of God. You understand? That means you have to change. You have to bethink yourself. You have to be born again. And that's an enemy to our people. Change is an enemy to our people. Our people don't want to change. Our people, they like feel good. They like to hear it, but they don't want to do it. Okay? And that's where the problem comes in. Doing it. Doing what it says. Not just hearing it, but doing what it actually says. That's where the problem comes in. That's where the resistance comes in. Okay? Read that again. Verse 7. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. 
Really? The law of the Lord is perfect, converting mm. the soul. Converting the soul, changing your thinking, your mind, really? your mindset. Come on. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Mm -hmm. Making wise is simple. Making wise is simple. Meaning what? The laws of God will prevent you from being a simp. God's commandments, guess what? It's a cure of being, if you are a simp, the laws of God will cure you of that disease. Because being a simp is a disease, it's a pandemic. It's not just a pandemic, it's a pandemic because it's man-made. Okay, watch this. So why would you be in the bitterness of your soul? Go back to Job 7 verse 11. I'm going to show you where the bitterness comes from. Watch this. Job 7 verse 11. Read that again. The book of Job chapter 7 verse 11. Therefore, I will not refrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. Mm -hmm. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. He says he's going to complain in the bitterness of his soul because there's wisdom which multiplies bitterness, right? Watch this. Give me Matthew 11 verse 6. This is where the bitterness comes from. Hmm. Bitter, another word for bitterness is what? We're going to read it next because Christ talked about that thing. Watch this. Matthew 11 verse 6. Read. The book of Matthew chapter 11 verse 6. Mm -hmm. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. You see that part right there? Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. The reason why the bitterness comes in when the wisdom of the Lord is brought up is because now you have to apply. You have to let go of that habit, that bad and poor habit that you accustom yourself to do. Now you actually have to change. You actually have to apply yourself. That's where the of being offended comes in. That's where the bitterness comes in. That's where you will complain in the bitterness of your soul because the laws of God is dealing with your spirit, your mind. You understand? So that you can change the way you think and the way you do things. You understand? According to the standard that the Lord has laid out for us. So a lot of the times when, you, when, when the scriptures is brought out, you are offended, that's the bitterness. It's because the offendedness comes, comes from the fact that you don't want to change. That's why people get offended. That's why a lot of people, they come in, in the truth, they leave. Why? Because when we teach the commandments of the Most High, brothers and sisters don't want to change. And that's why, because of being offended, they, they, they can, they, that wisdom becomes bitterness to them. Not sweetness, it becomes bitterness to them. So they don't want to change. That's the problem right there. Watch this. Now give me Mark 4, verse 17. Mark chapter 4, verse 17. Okay, Mark 4, verse 17. Read that. The book of Mark chapter 4, verse 17. Read. And have no root in themselves. Mm -hmm. And so endure, but for a time. Come on. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately. They are offended. You see that thing right there? It says, and it says, when is when affliction, pick it up from there. When affliction, read that again. When affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake. For the what? For the word's sake. For, for the word's sake. Meaning, meaning what? Now you are actually going to be challenged on what you say you believe. You are going to be tested on what you think, what you say you believe, you stand for. It says, for the word's sake, for the word's sake. That's why it says, there's wisdom which multiplies bitterness because that the laws of God that are brought to you, now they have to, the most high God is, I'm going to invade your life now. I'm going to invade your personal life. You understand? And some people can't handle that. Some people, they are comfortable in what? They are comfortable in filth. They are comfortable in chaos. They are comfortable in confusion. You see that thing? Not realizing that the most high God's laws is supposed to try you to change you, to change your thinking, your mind, the way you behave, the way you conduct yourself. God's laws is good for that. And our people are what? They don't want to change. You understand? Read that again, verse 17. The book of Mark chapter 4, verse 17. Read. And have no root in themselves. They have no root in themselves. The root is who? The root is Christ. Christ is the root of wisdom. Read. 
and so endure but for a time they're going to endure but for a time and that level that level of endurance is when what the endurance is is based on what is based on the, the sweetness of the scriptures now we are Israelites, we are God's chosen people, all praise to the most high, the kingdom is for us. You understand? We're gonna rule, we are the gods of the earth, the nations are gonna serve us. That's the reason why brothers and sisters be enduring. But that's not enough for salvation. You have to actually change your life. You have to apply the laws of God to your life and change your thinking. Okay, read. Afterward, when affliction or persecution Arise it for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. You see that thing? It says, afterwards, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, for the sake of what is written, it says, immediately they are offended. What brings the offense? Go back to Sarah 21, verse 12. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 21, verse 12. Come on. He that is not wise will be. The book of Ecclesiastes. No, no. I need you to stay focused, okay? Read that again. Sarah 21, verse 12. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 21, verse 12. Read. He that is not wise will not be taught. You see that thing? That's the, that's the, that's the first red flag right there. It says, he that is not wise will not be taught. Red flag right there. Because if they are refusing to be taught, that means they don't want to grow. Because when you are taught, you have to apply that which you are taught. They don't want to do that. So they don't want the wisdom because that wisdom that they have been taught, you have to now have to change your life with that wisdom. That's the key right there. Go ahead. But there is a wisdom which multiplies bitterness. But that wisdom that they're refusing is the one that's going to multiply bitterness because now the Lord is forcing you to change. The Mosa is forcing us to make changes in our lives. And a lot of our people, they don't want to do that. Okay, that's where the offense comes in. That's where the bitterness comes in. Watch this. Give me Isaiah 29, verse 21. Isaiah 21, 29, verse 21. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 21. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verses 29. Verse 21. 29, verse 21. Come on. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29. Chapter 29, verses 21. Wait. That make a man an offender for a word. You see that thing? They make a man an offender for a word because the word of God is brought out, right? Now you become, you become an offense to the people that you are bringing the word to. You understand? And they become offended. They have bitterness of spirit. Why? Because now you are bringing the word to them that requires them to change. And they don't want to do that. Now, brothers and sisters be looking at you like an enemy because now what you are teaching is like, but you're not making stuff up. You're reading from the Bible. But because they don't believe the Bible, they don't agree with what it says, but they claim that they are. But when persecution and when persecution, you understand? It says when persecution arises for the word's sake, I'm paraphrasing it, it says immediately they are offended. That's why he says what he says. Read that again, verse 21. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verses 21. Read. That make a man an offender for a word. So men and women get offended because now the laws is come. The most High God is invading their lives. Okay, come on. And lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate. You see that thing? Now they lay a snare, a trap for you that because you reprove in the gate. The gate is, that's where we go. The street corners, that's where our people go. You understand? That's where our people is. That's where we go to reprove them in the gate, to teach them the laws of God. Give me that in Amos chapter 4, verse 10. You understand? It says, they lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate. Because don't think that when we arrive with the scriptures, our people are happy that we are there. Mm -mm. Don't, 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 don't even for a second think that. Give me that in Amos 5, verse 10. Read that. The book of Amos, chapter 5, verse 10. Mm -hmm. They that hate him. No. They. Come on, read it right. The book of Amos, chapter 5, verse 10. Come on. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate. 
they hate him that rebuke in the gate. That's when we go to the street corners, that's what happens. And when we go to the street corners and teach, those that come in, now they have to actually sit down and now we have to go through, uh, make notes, take notes and attend class. Then the, over time, if they're not here for the right reasons, you understand? Over time, they're going to start to become offended as time goes by, as the scriptures are being brought up. You understand? That's why it says what it says there. You understand? It says, they hate him that rebuketh in the gate. Go ahead. And they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. Abhor, Pela, is a strong word. You understand? Despise. Detest. It goes into that. You understand? Meaning the hatred is so deep just because you have to bring out the word. Go back to Isaiah 29, verse 21 again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verses 21. Go ahead. That make a man an offender for a word. And lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate. You see that thing? They lay a trap for you because you re you're reproving in the gate. You are teaching them the commandments. Read. And turn aside the just for a thing of naught. You see that thing? So the just now are going to be turned for a thing of naught. Meaning what? They're going to teach you like nothing. Because you're reproving in the gate. And our people don't like that. That's where the bitterness comes in. That's where the offendedness come in. You understand? That's why you notice here in, in the classroom, there's brothers and sisters that see us on the streets. They get the contact details and all that. And then they attend maybe one, once or twice. And then when there's classes start to come out, they guess what? They have now start to have bitterness in the spirit. Why? Because now they are required to change. And they don't want that. Okay? Watch this. Give me... Give me the book of Job, chapter 12, verse 11. Job 12, verse 11. Okay. Job, chapter 12, verse 11. The book of Job, chapter 12, verses 11. Read. With the ancient is wisdom. No, no, no. Job, Job 12, verse 11. The book of Job, chapter 12, verse 11. Wait. Doth not the ear try words? Mm -hmm. And the mouth taste his meat? You see what he's saying? Doth not the ear try words? Because your ears, guess what? They are going to try the word of God that is coming out. How do they try it? Whether it is either you're going to hear what is coming out and apply it and take heed to it, or you're going to reject it. But your ear is going to try the words that are coming out. What words? Because the prophet don't come with their own words. They come with the laws of the most high God. You understand? Read that again. Verse 12, verse 11. The book of Job, chapter 12, verse 11. Read. Doth not the ear try words? Mm -hmm. And the mouth taste his meat? And the mouth taste his meat. The meat is not talking about the actual meat yet. He's going into what? The meat that we read in Deuteronomy 8, verse 3. The meat that we read in Matthew 4, verse 4. The meat that we read in John chapter 4, verse 29, down. You understand? He's going into, then meat is going into the word of God. The words that are going to try your ears. You understand? And that, that's the meat. That's the meat is making reference to here. Watch this. Give me Zechariah 7, verse 11. Does not your ear try words and the mouth taste his meat? The meat is the words that are going to try your ears. That's what Job is teaching us here. Read that. Zechariah 7, verse 11. This is the meat. Now, Zechariah is going to make it plain, okay? This is how he's going to try your ears, your spiritual ears. Watch this. The book of Zechariah, chapter 12, verse 11. No, 7, verse, verse 11. Come on. The book of Zechariah, chapter 7, verse 11. Wait. But they refused to hearken mm. and pulled away the shoulder. Come on. And stopped their ears. That mm -hmm. they should not hear. You see what is happening? Now the prophets go out to teach the, the commandments of the Most High to the people. You understand? Jump up to verse 8. So we see who sends Zechariah to the people. Read that. The book of Zechariah chapter 7 verse 8. Mm -hmm. And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah. Say. The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is what came to Zechariah. But the word of the Lord that was you that was given to Zechariah to go and teach the people. The people did not want to hearken. 
You understand? So he went, he, the Lord used Zechariah to go and try the ears of our people. You understand? Jump down to verse 11 again. But they refused to hearken. But they refused to hearken. Remember it says to, does not what? Does not the Lord what? He says, does not the ear try words? Yes, but they refused to hearken. Because Zechariah came with the word of the Lord to the people. Okay, come on. But they refused to hearken and pulled away the shoulder. They pulled away and the shoulder. You know, when somebody's trying to get, get, get to you, they say, you know, listen, bro, listen to this. They say, no, don't, don't even touch me. Don't touch me, man. That's what they are doing with the word of the most high God. Okay, come on. And stop their ears. And stop their ears. So that when, when the word of God is supposed to try their ears, they stop their ears, meaning they block their ears from what? From hearing the word of the Lord that what that came by Jeremiah. You know, okay? Read. I mean Zechariah. Come on. That they should not hear. That they should not hear. So the most high God will use Zechariah to go down there to try our people's ears. And you understand? And to give them the meat to their taste. That meat is the word of God which was supposed to try their ears. And when they tasted it, they refused. They turned away, their, they pulled away their shoulder. They stopped their ears that they should not hear. You see that? Next verse, come on. Yes, sir. Zechariah chapter 7 verse 12. Read. Zechariah chapter 7 verse 12. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone. You see, our this people, they, they, the he says, they made their hearts, hold on. They made their hearts as an adamant stone. You see an adamant stone? He, he, listen, that thing is harder than flint. It's so hard. The Lord says, our people, we made our hearts as an adamant stone, meaning we harden our minds. Okay, come on. To the words of God. Read. Lest they should hear the law. Stop right there. You see that thing, that thing right there? That's where the bitterness comes in. The bitterness, there's no bitterness when you are teaching that, listen, we are the gods of the earth, we the kings. You understand? No, there's no, there's the bit, where would the bitterness come from? The bitterness comes from where the law and the laws of God is taught. Read that part again, verse 12. Zechariah chapter 7, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, mm -hmm. lest they should hear the law. Lest they should hear the law. So the only time when our people harden their minds, the only time when the people, they what? They harden their spirits is only when the laws of God is taught to them. Lest they should hear the law. So they don't harden their minds against watching Facebook videos. They don't harden their minds against, uh, you know, Creflo Dollar, against uh, Pastor Chris, Bushiri, Mboro. Mm -mm, they don't harden their hearts when they're hearing those wicked ne Negroes, no. They only harden their hearts when the laws of God comes out. That's the problem right there. That's where the bitterness kicks in. You see that? That's where the offendedness kicks in. Read. And the words which the Lord of hosts have sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Come on. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. It looks like there's a bit of a delay. Could you jump off and come back in? There's a delay. Okay. So, but what, I, what you want to see here says, it says what? And the words which the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets. So the prophets, when they went to teach the people the law, they were moving in the spirit of Christ. That's what he's saying right there. You understand? He says, the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets. You understand? This prophets didn't come by themselves. They came in the spirit of the Lord. He says, therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Why? Because the people refused to hearken. You understand? The Moses went down there to prove them whether they're going to hear the word of God or not. They did not want to hear it. You see that thing? That's where the bitterness comes from. Okay? Go back to Job 12 verse 11. Job chapter 12 verse 11. Come on. Doth not, doth not the ear try words? Mm -hmm. And the mouth 
and the mouth taste his meat. And the mouth taste his meat. The meat is the word we're supposed to try our ears. Go ahead. And they refused, like we read in Zechariah. Go ahead. With the ancient is wisdom. Uh -huh. And in length of days, understanding. You see what it means? You see that the right there says, with the ancient is wisdom. Who is that? That's the most high God, like it says in Daniel. Get that in Daniel 7 verse 9. It says, with the ancient is wisdom. Okay. Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. Let's see what Job is making reference to. Daniel 7 verse 9. Read that. Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. Mm -hmm. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. Come on. And the ancient of days did sit. And the what? And the ancient of days did sit. And the ancient of days did sit. The ancient of days did sit. That's the most like God, right? Go back to Job chapter 12, verse 12. Job chapter 12, verse 12. Mm -hmm. With the ancient is wisdom. With the ancient of days is wisdom. The most like God, he is the ancient of days that has wisdom. Go ahead. And in length of days, understanding. Because the most high God is older than days. So guess what? He's got understanding that is older than days. Go ahead. With him is wisdom and strength. Mm -hmm. He has counsel and understanding. The most high God has got wisdom, strength, and counsel and understanding. And all of which is to for what? Is for the benefit of the 12 tribes of Israel. Understand that thing. But because our people, they only like, they, they treat the Bible like a party mix. They just want the good, the, the, the stuff that is sounding sweet to them. And then the bitter stuff, which is where the application comes in, they don't want that. So guess what? A lot of brothers and sisters come in Israel because they, they what? They come in Israel because of the sweetness of the scriptures. Yes, we are the Israelites. We are the 12 tribes of Israel. Then they leave. Because now we have to read the laws of God to them so they can change their lives. That's when they leave, they get offended, they hate the brothers and sisters that are bringing the scriptures out to them in the spirit of Christ. You see that thing? So they don't see the bigger picture, although it's painted to them through the scripts. You understand? Watch this. Give me Sirach chapter 20, verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 20, verse 1. Because God's commandments is to reprove our thoughts, to reprove our actions and our behaviors, we can return back to this book. Sirach chapter 20 and verse 1. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 20, verse 1. Read. There is a reproof that is not comely. Read that again. again. some man holdeth his tongue, and he is wise. Okay, read the verse again. Ecclesiastes chapter 20, verse 1. There is a reproof that is not comely. Come on. Again, some man holdeth his tongue and he is wise. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 20, verse 1. Read. There is a reproof that is not comely. There's a reproof that's not comely. Listen, there's a certain type of correction that's not going to feel nice. There's correction that will make you mad as hell. But guess what? It's medicine. You understand? There's a reproof that is not comely. Some correction is, listen, is there's not going to be cuddly, cuddly, come little, no, no. Mm -mm, that's not going to happen. Okay, there's some reproof is like that. Read. Again, some man holdeth his tongue and he is wise. So many what? You take it because the Lord, the most high God is what? He's building your spirit up. He's getting rid of the unwanted um, foreign material, you understand, in your spirit. Because you, the gold, the laws of God will melt you. You understand? Ray? It is much better to reprove than to be angry secretly. God, he says, it's better to be it's better to reprove than to be angry secretly. That's why when you have a problem with your neighbor, guess what you must do? You must go to your brother. Use the scriptures. The scripture says, you have ought with your neighbor. Go to your neighbor himself and debate thy cause with him. You understand? Instead of being angry secretly, because that will breathe bitterness. You see that thing? That will develop ang envy in your spirit. So the most high God said, don't do that. Read that again, verse 2. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 20, verse 2. 
Mm -hmm. It is much better to reprove than to be angry secretly. You see that thing? It's better to reprove than to be angry secretly. Now that's heavy right there. Black people don't know how to do that. Yeah, black people don't know how to do that thing. Now that's heavy right there. Read it again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 20, verse 2. Mm -hmm. It is much better to reprove than to be angry secretly. It's better to reprove than to be angry secretly. Go ahead. And he that confesseth his fault shall be preserved from hurt. Now that's heavy right there. It says, he that what? And he that confesseth his fault mm -hmm. shall be preserved from hurt. So now what, I'm sure, what I want to actually dig into this just a little bit. Give me a second, right? It says it is much better to reprove than to be angry secret. Because if you don't correct your neighbor for the hurt that he's done unto you, or talk to your neighbor about what he's done to you, guess what's going to happen? What's going to happen is that you're going to develop the spirit of what? You're going to develop anger in your spirit and bitterness in your spirit. Okay? Because you don't want, you don't correct, you didn't go to your neighbor himself. Now you start to develop this bitterness in your spirit because of that. You start to have hatred for your neighbor. And he that confesseth his fall shall be pre preserved from hurt. Because guess what? I get it, you go to your neighbor. You're, you have a problem with your neighbor, right? Mm. You know what? Let's do this. Give me Proverbs real quick, okay? Give me Proverbs. All right. Give me Proverbs. Chapter 25, verse 9. Proverbs 25, verse 9. Read that. Proverbs 25, verse 9. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 25, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Debate thy cause with your neighbor himself and discover not a secret to another. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, debate your cause with your neighbor himself. That's the commandment. That's the law. That's not a suggestion. And this is what black people don't, our people, they don't want to, they don't do it in the world. They like to gossip about it. Instead of going to your neighbor himself, the one that you have a problem with, guess what? You want to go around them. You see that? So now what's happening is that this is the reason why it's written in the book because as the nation of Israel, we didn't do that. We did not do that thing. So now the Lord is saying in Serak, go back to Serak now. Okay. Go back to Ecclesiastes 20. Verse 2 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 20, verse 2. Mm -hmm. It is much better to reprove than to be angry secretly. Wait. And he that confesses his fault shall be preserved from hurt. Okay, so if you confess your, your, your fault, you want to be preserved from hurt. Because who's going to bring hurt? Who might bring hurt to you? The brother that is angry secretly. He's the one that will bring hurt to you because why? Because he's not giving you a chance for you to apologize to him, to confess your sins unto him for the stuff that you, for what you did to him and a worse. Because you might have offended the brother, but he doesn't know. So instead of going to him, you, you, you understand, the brother might have, been, might have been offended because of something he did, but he doesn't tell you that he's offended or he's not okay about what you said. So he be what he becomes angry secretly. And guess what? That anger turns into bitterness. That bitterness turns into hatred. Hatred turns to murder. You understand? So that's what Sarag is saying right there. Okay, read. Verse three, come on. How good is it when thou art reproved to show repentance for so? For so shalt thou escape willful sin. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, how good is it when thou art reproved to show repentance? Meaning when you are corrected, guess what you must do? You do something wrong, you must guess what? You must apologize. Make it right. You must show repentance, meaning to change it so that you don't let it happen again. You understand? It says, for so shalt thou escape willful sin. What does that mean? You will escape willful sin. Because guess what? If you don't, guess what? If you don't correct, if you don't show repentance, 
you're going to continue in that sin because that, now it's worthful sin. It's no longer a mistake. Because when you are reproved, you show repentance. That means you are, you are, you are sorry for what you've done. But when you don't show repentance, you're going to continue in that sin. That's what he's saying right there. Worthful sin. And worthful sin is going to get you killed. Watch this. Give me that in Job 5 and 17. Job chapter 5 and 17. Let's read that. The book of Job chapter 5 verse 17. Go ahead. Behold, happy is the man whom God corrected. You see that? Happy is the man whom God corrected. Guess what? The Lord is not going to come down here to correct you. Because he appears to come down and correct you. That means the Lord is not going to correct. The Lord will just put you to death. That will be his correction. Because somebody might read this and say, you see, only God can judge you. Mm -mm, he's not talking about that. The Lord is not going to come down here to correct you. The Lord will use mind and earth to judge those matters if you believe in this book. If you don't, guess what? The Lord is going to correct you how? By putting you to death. Okay? Read. Therefore, despise not thou the chastising of the Almighty. The chastening of the Almighty. He says, therefore, don't despise the chastening of the Almighty. Don't hate the correction of the Mosai. Read. For he maketh so and bindeth up. Mm -hmm. He he woundeth, he woundeth, and his hands make whole. So the Lord is going to make you so and bind you up, and he will wound you, and he will what? He will make you whole. He will heal you because he does that. He will he will break you so he can be so he can rebuild you. The Lord does that. Why? Because the most high God, he loves us. He's our father. You understand? He can do whatever he wants with us. Okay? And everything that the Lord does is correct. He's always correct. The most high is correct all the time. The Lord is not wrong about nothing. You understand? Watch this. Remember, we're still dealing with wisdom that will multiply bitterness. Don't forget the thought now. Okay? Give me the book of Mark chapter 9 now, verse 43. Mark 9, verse 43. There is wisdom which multiplied bitterness. Give me Mark chapter 9, verse 43. The book of Mark, chapter 9, verses 43. Read. And if thy hand offend thee, mm -hmm. cut it off. Come on. It is better for thee to enter into life main than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that shall never be quenched. So now this is Christ speaking, is teaching us how to get our minds right. He says, if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. So is this literal? No, this is not literal. This is figurative. Because your hand is something that is belong, is part of your body, right? So that's what he's going into. So he's, he's going into something or someone, something that is close to you, something that is a part of you that is offending you in this walk that is hindering you in this walk that's what he's going into okay if your hand offend thee, cut it off meaning what you have to get rid of that thing that is offending you in this walk that is preventing you from progressing in this walk jump down to verse 45 and if thy foot offend thee cut it off mm -hmm. it is better for thee to enter half into life than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that shall never be quenched. Meaning what? That's the fire that will, that, that, that's, that's, the, that's the lake of fire right there. That's what he's talking about, the second death. But the Lord is, te is teaching us a lesson. If thy foot offend thee, cut it off. Because with your hands, there's things that you do with your hands. You understand? And guess what? Because you need your hands. And verse 45 says, if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. Because if your foot is offending you, that is prevent, that is not, that means is obstructing you when you walk. It's obstructing you in the spiritual walk. So that's what Christ is explaining to us. You understand? Because your foot is part of your body. Jump down to verse 47 now. The book of Mark chapter 9 verse 47. Mm -hmm. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. So he's saying, listen, these things, these things that are offending you that are part of you, 
You cannot allow these things that are part of you to what? To what? Hold on. It says you cannot allow these things that are part of you to prevent you from getting the kingdom. That's what he's saying right there. So let's make it plain because Christ is going to make it plain. Watch this. Give me Matthew 10, 35. Matthew chapter 10, 35. Everything that we read here is things that are part of you. That's your hand, your foot, and your eyes, right? Watch this. Matthew 10, verse 35. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 35. Read. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father. Stop right there. And against... Hold on. He says, I'm come to set a man at variance. Variance means at odds. You understand? He says, I'm come to set at odds a man against his father. Your father is a part of you. You understand? Right? And the daughter against her mother. The daughter against her mother. So your mother is a part of you. Go ahead. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law because your mother-in-law is your mother. Give me that in Toby real quick in case there's some doubting Thomas is up in here. Give me that in Tobit, okay? Tobit chapter 10, verse 12. Read that. The book of Tobit, chapter 10, verse 12. Read. And he said unto his daughter, Honor thy father and thy mother-in-law, uh -huh. which are now thy parents. Which are now thy what? Which are now thy parents. Which are now thy parents. So your mother-in-law and your father-in-law, they are your parents. You understand? So go back to Matthew 10 now. Matthew chapter 10. Okay, verse 35 again. The book of Matthew chapter 10, verse 35. Mm -hmm. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother. Mm -hmm. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. So now, guess what? All these people that are being mentioned here, these are people that are there like the hand, your foot, and your eye that we read in the book of Mark. So these are people closest to you. You understand? The Lord is saying, if these people offend you in this walk, they hinder you in this walk, the Lord says, cut them off. Now that will bring bitterness to your soul because, oh, but that's my mother. The Lord is saying, mm -mm. if they are preventing you to walk properly in this walk, the Lord says, cut them off. Understand that? Okay, come on. Verse 36, read. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. You see what he's saying? A man's enemies, that's what the foe means. A man's enemies shall be they of his own household. So your enemies will be in your house or the people closest to you. The people that are close, that are part of you, like a hand, like an eye, like a foot is closest to you. So that will bring bitterness to your soul. You understand? The question is, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to apply the scriptures or are you going to follow in your motions? Oh, but that's my daddy. Oh, but that's my wife. Oh, no, but that's my friend. Mm -mm, to hell with that. Keep the commandments of the Most High. If they are offending you in this walk, you understand? The Lord says, cut them off. Okay? Read on. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. So now... It means is a human meaning if you love father or mother more than Christ, meaning you choose your father, your mother, you choose them over what the Bible says. Your mother says, you know what? You don't come to my, you don't even, you didn't even say happy birthday to me. No, mom, I'm not doing that because it's against the laws of God. Okay. So you cannot go to your mother's birthday when God, the most high God is against it. The most high God is against that because that's idolatry. You understand? So the Lord says you can't do that or your father and so forth. So what we're reading here, these are people closest to you. These are people that are part of you. The Lord says if you cannot put my laws above them, you're not worthy of me. Go ahead. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. You see that thing? That this goes into your children. Your son, your daughter more than the Lord the Lord says you are not worthy. You are not worthy. You, you, you are not worthy to be a disciple of Christ or follower of Christ. You understand, right? And he that taketh so not it. his. 
You know what? That's it on that. That's it on that. That's it on that. Now give me Luke 14, 26. We're still explaining Mark chapter what? Mark chapter 9, 43, 45, and 47. Here we just explained it is the foot, the hand, and the eye is making reference to people closest to you, people that are part of you. That's why it says a man's foes shall be they of his own household. That's your mothers, your fathers, your cousins, your aunties, your uncles, your sons, your daughters, your wife, your husband. Okay? Give me that in Luke 14, 26. Come on. The book of Luke chapter 14, verse 26. Really? If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now that's heavy right there. That's heavy right there. We it's the same thing that we read, but there's an additional that Luke added a more detailed. He added a, um, some additional list of items that was not listed in the book of uh, in Matthew. Okay, read that again. Verse twenty six, the book of Luke chapter fourteen, verse twenty six. Wait. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters. Yea, and, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. So now it says, do you see what Luke is, is saying? It says, if any man come to me, because this is Christ speaking, but Luke wrote this, and hate not his father. So does it say you must hate your father? No, he's not saying that. It's, he's going into what? He's going into choosing your father more. Luke is using the word hate. Matthew is using the word love. So these are opposites. So he says, not is and love his father more than me. He is saying, and hate not his father. Meaning what? You love your father more than you love what the Bible says. Because your father will make you do things that are, are against this Bible. The law says you are not worthy of me because you're supposed to defend this when you're among the indiscreet. When you're among those of our brothers and sisters that don't, don't believe and those that get offended when you apply what is, what is written, when you talk about what is written. The law says you must cut them off because they're going to hinder you, going to cause you the kingdom. That's what he's saying right there. Okay? That's why. Read that again, verse 26. The book of Luke chapter 14, verse 26. Mm -hmm. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. He cannot be my disciple. So now, what I want to show you something here, you see that part right there? It says, it says what? It says father, it says mother and wife and children and brethren. That's brothers and sisters in the truth and sisters also. That goes into that. If you've got brothers and sisters in the world as well, yeah, it says, yeah, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now, watch this. You see that part right there when it says, and his own life also. Now, that part right there, that part right there, because it might not be a it might not be a, a heavy thing for you to cut people off, right? Then it says, and his own life also. You see that part right there. This is the this is one of the biggest stumbling block in Israel. His own life also. This is talking about you, the things that are hindering you personally in your own life. You understand the things that are within you that are hindering you in this walk. The law says you cannot be his disciple. Now that's heavy right there, right? Watch this. Now, go back, okay? Read the next verse so we can deal with his own life also, because in the next verse, he explains it. I don't, need to, I don't need to go nowhere. Read the next verse. Come on. The book of Luke, chapter 14, verse 27. Mm -hmm. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me, cannot be my disciple. That's the, you see, that's what he, it goes into his own life also. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me, cannot be my disciple. So what is that talking about, to bear your cross? That goes into what you must, guess what? Here's what it means. Your own life also, he says, you cannot be his disciple. Give me that in Romans 12, okay? Romans chapter 12. Let's read that. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. 
the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now, about that time, Herod, the king stretched forth. No, no, forth no. What verse you in? What chapter you in? Romans 12, verse 1. The book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You see that part right there? It says you must present your body a living sacrifice. That sacrifice must be holy. It must be acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So when it says his own life also, guess what? You have to present your body a living sacrifice that is holy and acceptable to the most High. That's why it says, and his own life also. If you don't bear your cross and come after Christ, he says you cannot be his disciple. Because guess what you must do to bear that cross? You must present your body a living sacrifice. You must present your body a living sacrifice. How do you do that? Because now you have to deal with self now. How do you do that? Present your body a living sacrifice. Give me 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5. Watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. This is how you present your body a living sacrifice. You understand? That's how you, that's why it says, if you don't hate your own life also, you cannot be my disciple. And that's where the bitterness comes in. Because when it's just somebody else that you know, maybe, or your mother, your father, your uncle, your auntie, and so forth, you understand? Your kids, your wife. Yeah, you might be able to do that. But now when it comes to you now, you, your own personal garbage that you must get rid of in your spirit, then that's where the problem comes in, okay? Because now you have to change, okay? Watch this, 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. Second book of Corinthians 13, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Stop right there. Examine who? Examine yourself. No, examine your father. Examine yourselves. Your mother. Examine yourselves. Your children, your wife, your uncle, your auntie. Examine yourselves. Examine yourselves. That's why it says, and his own life also cannot be my disciple. And this is where the biggest stumbling block is, where brothers and sisters have to examine themselves. Meaning what? You examine the way you used to live and what, how, what, what the most high God has to say about it. If you find out which you will, not if, when you discover that the way you've been living your life, notice the emphasis in your life, so you think it was yours. Guess what? When you do examination, you have to check, okay, the way I've been living, what does the most I has to say about it? The most I said wrong, 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 wrong. That means all the wrongs, you have to write all these wrongs with the laws of God. That's where the bitterness comes in because now your life is to change now. You understand? That's where the bitterness of the scriptures come in. That's where the offendedness come in. Now that's where you decide. That's, the, that's when the decision comes in. Are you for this Bible or not? Prove your own self, the scripture says. Read that again. Second book of Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. Right. Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Mm-hmm. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you? Except ye be reprobates. You see what he's saying? Except ye be void of judgment. Meaning what? You don't see nothing wrong with you. Everything is all good. Guess what? That right there is another problem in Israel. Where brothers don't want to sit down and examine themselves. Because the first person to lead is yourself. The first person that needs to change is you. You understand? The first person that needs to change is yourself. You have to apply that which is written. No excuses. You understand? We exclude. Losers make excuses. That's the trademark of losers. That's the trademark of simps. Simps and losers, they always make excuses. And excuses, they feel good in your head. The excuses, they always feel good in your head. 
But guess what? That's for your detriment because you're not going to change. You're always cutting yourself. Read that again, verse 5. Second book of Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 5. Wait. Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Mm -hmm. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate. Now, watch this. Here's how losers make excuses, right? I'm going to show you something. Give me the book of Job 12 and 1. Job 12. I'm going to show you where a lot of brothers and sisters, they stumble here. Yeah. They stumble because of this. Because this is what you tell yourself. You tell yourself lies and you believe those lies that you tell yourself. Give me that in Job 12 and 1. 12 verse 2. Watch this. The book of Job, chapter 12, verse 2. Right? But I have understanding as well as you. No, no. No, no, come on. What verse you at? What chapter are you in? Made a mistake, Job 12, so that was verse two. 3. Okay, Job 12, verse 2. Come on, read that. The book of Job, chapter 12, verse 2. Mm -hmm. No doubt, but ye are the people. Go ahead. And wisdom shall die with you. Now, that's a heavy statement right there that he's making. The excuses come in, he says, you see what he's saying? He says, no doubt, but you the people. No doubt you are Israel. No doubt you are God's chosen people. There's no doubt about it. And a lot of you, that's the only thing that, that's what, that's where the excuses come in. Because you think because you are Israel, ah, you know, I got this. And a lot of you, that's what you tell yourself. No, uh, because I'm Israel, I got this. Because I'm Israel. Now, I'm going to show you something, right, about with that wicked thought process. Yes, we are Israel, but to be a Jew is a lot of hard work. To be a Jew will not land on your lap. Yeah, you are born Israel, but you must prove that you are Israel by your works, that you believe that as a Jew, this is how I must behave myself. And that right there, that's where a lot of brothers and sisters, they stumble on. And a lot of you, you don't want to change it. That's why a lot of you are being counseling. Brothers, they say, no, that class was heavy. Sisters say, mm, I learned a lot from that class. But guess what? Are you getting, he says, some say, will say, you know, I get cut all the time. I, you know, that class was really chopping all over the place. But for some ungodly reason, right? Nobody actually sets councils, set up council to deal with the, 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 the stuff that came out that cut them. Nobody does that. So wait a minute. You just a walking you are just you are a walking good basically. Hmm, let me refrain my thought. Let me catch my thought a little bit. So it's like here you are, you've got all these cuts on your body, right? Somebody be stabbing you and chopping you up. You are bleeding. You understand? Hold this. Let me show you what you look like. Give me Job 7, verse 5. Watch this. The book of Job, chapter 7, verse 5. Go ahead. My flesh is clothed with worms. And my flesh, clothed... Is, clothed. My flesh is clothed with worms. Because worms, they only come in when there's a what? When there's rottenness. Okay, come on. And clothes of dust. Mm -hmm. My skin is broken and become loathsome. My skin is broken and become loathsome. So here you are. You understand? Your flesh is clothed with worms. You understand? And clots of dust. My skin is broken and become loose. Now you hate even the way you look, right? So you've got cuts all over the place. You are bleeding. You have not been washed and all of that. Now flies jump on you. Now flies, they lay eggs. Then you've got maggots on you. You see that thing? So hold on a second. So every day you walk like that. But what are you doing about it? Nothing. All you say, no, the class was heavy. Okay, wait a minute. So you got I, cut. I got cut here. I got cut there. Hmm. So if that's the case, right, what are you doing about it? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So now read the verse again, Job 7 verse 5. The book of Job chapter 7 verse 5. 
Go ahead. My flesh is clothed with worms and clods of dust. Mm -hmm. My skin is broken and become loathsome. You see that thing? My skin is broken and become loathsome. So a lot of the a lot of you, that's how you walk. You think being cut, it means that means I'm I got that means I'm applying it. No. Being cut is the first step of record. The Lord is telling you that you have a problem. So now you need to seek counsel on how do I get rid of this? How do I fix this in my life? How do I remove this big blow that is in my spirit? Guess what? A lot of all of you, you don't do that. You like to be chased around, little no no. Mm -mm. I'm not doing that thing. Okay, I'm not doing that. Because these classes are designed so that the Lord is showing you, listen, you need to fix this thing. And even when we provide solution, you still don't apply it. We show you the problems and the solutions and steps to overcome, but you still don't do it. You understand? You want to be followed around because in the Christian church, that's what they used to do. They used to do that. In Christian church, when you don't show up, they call you, hey, what's going on? Because they know, hey, listen, you are affecting the bottom line. The money is short. That's all they care about. You understand? So you, when you come in Israel, that's what you're expecting. That's not gonna, that's not what this is about. That's why it says, examine yourself. The scriptures will be brought up, yes, but you have to sit down and apply yourself. That's the point, okay? Now, let's go back. Job 12 verse two again. The book of Job chapter 12 verse two. Wait. No doubt, but ye are the people. And mm -hmm. wisdom shall die with you. He says, there's no doubt that you're the people. You, Israel. Watch this. Because this is the mindset. That's the reason a lot, a lot of you, you don't want to sit down and apply yourself. Watch this. Give me the book of Matthew. Okay, give me Matthew 3. Matthew 3 verse 7. We're going to start there. Matthew chapter 3 verse 7. This is what the scribes and Pharisees was doing. Guess what? Hmm. The same spirits are back this day. Matthew. Okay, Matthew 3, verse 7. Let's read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 7. Go ahead. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Who hath warned you, who had warned you to flee from the, from the wrath to come? Because the wrath to come was talking about Jesus the Christ, but what I'm showing is that the scribes and Pharisees, they came to John's baptism, right? Watch the next verse. Go ahead. Bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. He says, listen, yes, you the people, like Job said, but you must bring forth fruits meet for repentance. The fruits that are meet for repentance is what? The works. You must bring forth works good for repentance. What is that? The application of God's laws. There's no, like, what's the point of you getting cut, but you don't seek counsel to overcome the cuts that you have? How are you going to mollify them with ointment? How are you going to do that? You understand? But you comfort yourself and say, but we the people, we the people, yes, you the people, you hear of the word, but you don't do it. You're going to die with that wisdom. You see that? Read that thing again, verse 8. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 8. Come on. Bring, bring forth, therefore, fruits meet for repentance. Bring forth, therefore, fruits good for repentance. Next verse. Read. And think not to say within yourselves, we mm -hmm. have Abraham to our father. Stop right there. We the people. He says, don't think within yourself. That's what he's saying. He says, and think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. Go back to Job 12 verse 2 because I know some of you forgot. Job 12 verse 2 again. The book of Job 12 verse 2. No Go doubt, ahead. but ye are the people. Mm -hmm. And wisdom shall die with you. He says, there's no doubt that you're the people, but this wisdom that you got is going to die with you because you don't apply it. You hear it, but you don't do it. Because you convince yourself that, no, but we have Abraham to our father. Meaning we is uh, we the people. Go back to Matthew 3 verse 9. The book of Matthew chapter 3 verse 9. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. 
For I say unto you that God mm -hmm. is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. You see what he's saying? He says, because don't think that because you are Israel, you made it is by default you're going to make the kingdom. No. He says, because I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Meaning those that are not, don't know this truth, the Lord says, I'm going to raise the stones in your place. That's what he's saying right there. Because he's the most, he can do that. You understand? The stones goes making reference to what? They, our forefathers and foremothers that don't know this truth, that they are what? They are like a dumb stone. The Lord says, I'm going to output spirit in that stone and it will wake up. It will do my will and you will get the kingdom. That's what we're reading here. You understand? Because the reason why a lot of you don't self-examine to change your life, to apply yourself, is because this is the what this is the lie you tell yourself. John had to correct them, said, mm -mm, don't think that, don't think because of that, you automatically gonna get the kingdom. Because some of you think that. Some of you have told yourself that lie. You see that thing? You'll be wrong about that because this is this was the problem during the time of Rome. It is the problem today in the extension of ancient Rome, America. Is the same mindset, those same spirits are back this day. Okay, watch this. Give me go back to Job now. Go back to Job 12, verse 2 again. The book of Job 12, verse 2. No mm -hmm. doubt, but ye are the people. And wisdom shall die with you. And wisdom shall die with you. Watch this. Because what good is that wisdom if you don't apply it? What good is it? Give me that in Matthew 5, verse 15. Matthew 5, verse 15. What good is it? Here you are, you say you've got this wisdom of the Lord, but you don't apply it. So what good is it? What's the point? Why do you have it? Which is because it's useless to you because it's not profitable to you. Why is it not profitable? Because you don't commit it to memory because you don't have the desire to what? To learn it. Like we read in 2 Maccabees 2, verse 25. You see how that comes together? Read that. Okay, Matthew 5, verse 15. Read the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 15. Go ahead. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a, a bushel. A bushel. It says, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. It says, you don't switch on a candle and put it under a bushel, meaning you hide it. Right? But on, but on a candlestick. And but you must put it, hold on but you must put that candle on a candlestick. Like you see the menorah, the way that is set up? Yes, it says you must put it on a candlestick, that candle that you switch on. You don't switch it on and then you hide it. You must switch it on, you put it on a candlestick. You understand, read. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. So that candle is gonna give light to all that are in the house. What is that candle? The laws of God, the understanding of this Bible. Guess what? You learn it. Your, your job is to give light, is to give understanding. You understand? Like we read. Go back to Psalms. Watch this. Psalms 19, verse 8. To give light to all that are in the house. Psalms 19 and verse 8. The book of Psalms. Chapter 19, verse 8. Mm -hmm. The statutes of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart, the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. You see that thing? The commandments of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. So now that your eyes are enlightened, your job is to enlighten the eyes of your people, the 12 tribes of Israel. It's not that you learn it, but you sit with that wisdom. Because guess what? You just saying I'm Israel, but you don't want to do nothing about the wisdom you got to apply it to yourself, to change your life, to go out there to change your people's lives and wake them up. He says, you're going to die with that wisdom. Because what good is it? Okay. Go back to Matthew now. Chapter 5. Read verse 16 now. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 16. Let your light so shine before me 
mm -hmm. that they that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven you see that that's what you're supposed to do with that light with that understanding you understand it says let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven so when you learn this wisdom but you don't let your light shine, which is your understanding, guess what? The people are not going to see your good works and you are not glorifying your father, which is in heaven. You are glorifying your father, which is the devil. Understand that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 41, verses 15. Read. A man that hideth his foolishness is better than a man that hideth his wisdom. Okay, so it's, it's raining quite hard this side. So um, can you speak a little bit louder? Yes, sir. Drag 41 verse 15 again. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 41 verse 15. Go ahead. A man that hideth his foolishness is better than a man that hideth his wisdom. You see what the Bible is saying? Remember, it says, No man, neither do men light a nuda, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. But you're supposed to put it on a candlestick. So it says, A man that hideth his foolishness is better than a man that hideth his wisdom, because that's a bigger fool right there. How do you hide that wisdom? You don't apply it. That's how you hide that wisdom. You don't apply it. So you are a bigger fool than the brother who doesn't even know the scripts. You understand? Give me that in Sarah 20, verse 31. Sarah 20, verse 31. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 20, verse 31. Come on. Better is he that hideth his folly than a man that hideth his wisdom. That's the Bible right there. The most said God it says, Better is he that hideth his folly than a man that hideth his wisdom. So it's better for you, uh, uh, the man that hides his folly is better than the one that hides his wisdom. Because that's a bigger fool right there. That's a simple. You see that thing? Because you will die with that wisdom. Go back to Job 12 and 1. Job 12 is 2 again, so we can get it. Okay? The book of Job 12 is 2. Mm -hmm. No doubt. But ye are the people, and wisdom shall die with you. But wisdom shall die with you, and wisdom shall die with you what? because you don't want to apply that wisdom. You don't want to apply it. So what good is it? You understand? Watch this. Because think about it like this, right? Watch this. Give me that in 1 Samuel 2 verse 3. 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 3. Read that. First book of Samuel chapter 2 verse 3. Uh -huh. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogance come out of thy mouth. Mm -hmm. For the Lord is a God of knowledge. And by him, actions are weighed. And by him, actions are weighed. The most High God is about actions. The most High God is about what you do. Not what you say, but what you do. That's why it says, examine yourself, whether you be in the faith. Whether you believe in Christ. You believe on Christ and the sacrifice that he made enough for you to apply that which is written. You understand? So now your actions must are going to be weighed. The most high God is going to judge you by your actions. Now watch this. Because a lot of the times his brother says, okay, I want to get married. But guess what? The brother does not seek counsel. One, two. The brother does not. A lot of you, you a lot of you, except the new brothers, you've had the scriptures. We had classes where when you are proving, guess what you must do? You must go for blood tests, okay? You must go and check whether you've got a disease. Give me that in Sirach 6 and 7, okay? And this does not only apply for those that are proving. If you're not proving, you are single, guess what you must do? You must make sure that you know where you stand. You must prove yourself, know yourself. Know whether what disease you have or not have. Know whether you are healthy or not. You don't know. You see that? Well, that's simple as hell. Uh, Sirach 6 and 7. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes of the 6 verse 7. Read. 
if thou wouldst get a friend, prove him first mm -hmm. and be not hasty to credit. You see what the Bible is saying? If thou wouldst get a friend, prove him first and be not hasty to credit him. So guess what? It would behoove you to sit down to say, you know what? I need to do a checklist. Okay. I'm going to get married in the future or I'm going to get married soon. Guess what I must do? I must go to the, to the hospital, to the clinic to, to go do blood tests, to see, to do an STD blood test. You understand? To do a health check and so forth. You must do those things and know where you stand. Your partner, your wife-to-be, they also must do the same thing. You, you're not showing me but you must know, you must show her, she must show you, and vice versa. And those of you brothers that are not married, guess what you do? Your job is to do the same, to know for yourself, to know where you stand, so that if there's a problem, we can fix it now before you go any further, before anything else. But a lot of, but you don't do that. You see that thing? Because you don't take it serious. So it multiplied bitterness because now you have to get off your lazy behind and actually do something about this thing. You understand? You say you want you, you are an Israelite. You're going to get married soon. You are a brother. You understand? You don't care about your career goals because you're supposed to have them because the scripture talk about that. You understand? Your career. You must talk about your career. Your career is in the Bible, by the way. You understand? Your aspiration personal development and so forth. Okay. Yeah, that's important. Watch this. Give us a 14 verse 11. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 14 verse 11. Read. My son, according to thy ability, do good to thyself. Mm -hmm. And give the Lord his due offering. You see that thing meaning offering sacrifice, you offer sacrifices of righteousness. So it says, my son, according to thy ability, do good to thyself. Meaning what? De Self-development, personal development, you know, in terms of career-wise, you understand? A lot of you are still young, but you are lazy as hell. Why? Because you don't have that mindset. Because you only want to act when now you are about to prove. By the time you prove, you need to have your own house, you understand? Which is a good idea to do that now before you get married, okay? You must start thinking about stuff like that. But a lot of you, you don't think about that. And if you want that house, that home, guess what? You have to see, well, okay, in order for me to afford a house like this, what do I need to do in my, in my personal development plan for me to do what? To be able to afford a house like this. What type of job do I need to have? What type of skills do I need to acquire in order for me to get a house like this in this type of neighborhood? What do I need to do? A lot of you are not doing that. Me, I'm not going to be in girl for day forever. I'm going to be planning. I'm going to be moving. The hell is this? Understand that. But right now, I'm gathering some sense. Don't get it twisted. Okay? So, but a lot of you, you don't think about that. You are still in that baby mode, okay? But you need to think about that thing. You understand? That's why it says you must, yes, you must give the Lord, the Lord is due offering, but, but you also must what? You must make sure that you, there's personal development, okay? But those things, they bring bitterness to your mind because you just want to be a professional student. That's not what this Bible is about, okay? Another thing is that unhealthy choices. Living, making unhealthy choices and living an unhealthy lifestyle. That's another quote. That's another factor that brothers don't look at, sisters don't look at. If I have to tell you, you must exercise, something wrong with you. You are sick to the mind. If I have to tell you that, why do I have to tell you that all the time? That means you butt out. you sick as hell. You are not taking this serious because that health, you being healthy, who's going to benefit? You. But I have to say, come on, little Nunu. I mean, that's crazy to me. You see that thing? You see, we don't think about that stuff because you think you just want to be a professional student. No, that's not what this is about. Watch this. 
give me, give me that in Sirach real quick, okay? Ecclesiasticus. Sirach chapter 30 and verse 15. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 30 verse 15. Uh -huh. Health and good state of body are above all gold. Read. And a strong body above infinite wealth. And a strong body above infinite wealth. So a health and good state of body above all gold. Meaning what? That's golden. Because guess what? Somebody that has infinite wealth and so forth, and they are unhealthy, it's unprofitable to them. Because the next verse, it also talks about that. Next verse. Go ahead. There is no riches above a sound body and uh -huh. no joy above a, above the joy of the heart. That's what the Bible says. There is no riches above a sound body. So if your body is sound, meaning what? Sound of constitution, health. Meaning what? You are healthy not just only on the outside on how you look, but you are healthy on the inside on how your cells are, meaning what? Your biological, your, your, bio, your biology is healthy. You understand? You've got healthy cells. Your blood is healthy. Your muscles are healthy. Your skin is healthy. Your heart is healthy. Your kidneys, your skin, so on and so forth. Your hair is healthy. Your eyes are healthy. Your ears are healthy. Your mind is healthy. Your brain. All of which you have to help. You have to make healthy choices to get there. And that's a process. It takes time to get there but you have to develop that thing. You have to go through that pain of doing that. You understand? Some of you, you don't want to go through that. There's a video actually I sent on the group. Just say, only a few of you watched that. Only a few of you responded on that video. Because your mind is not correct. You understand? You're not focused. So guess what? That, that's, the, that's the cause of the bitterness because the bitterness, you realize the bitterness is the reason why. The reason why you have the bitterness is because now you have to actually act on what the scripture says do. And that's where the bitterness comes in. That wisdom is the one that multiplies that type of bitterness. So much so that you end up just hating what the Bible has to say. You're only happy when the Bible is closed. You only have to see, the, you only look at the bible when you are watching youtube hmm? some of you you only you are only okay when you have to watch vi youtube videos instead of sitting down and actually studying what the scripture says it says blessed be he that leadeth okay you have to sit down and study that's how these things they're gonna register in your head in your spirit you understand now Watch this. Give me the book of Hebrews 11 verse 24. So part of the biggest reason why brothers don't want to what? Remember, because I know some of you forgot the point, what we read in Luke 14. It says, if you don't hate your own life also, you cannot be my disciple. A lot of the reason why you see brothers and sisters are spiritual midgets is because of this. Hebrews 11 verse 24. Watch this. Hebrews 11, verse 24. Let's read that. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 24. Come on. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. You did what? Refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. So Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Why? Because remember, Moses was a prince in Egypt. You understand? Moses had a, had a higher position in Egypt. And he refused that. Why? Keep reading. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. What? To suffer affliction. So Moses with... chose to suffer affliction. He chose to suffer affliction. Come on, read. With the people of God, uh -huh. then to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. 
than to do what? Than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. That's the reason why this wisdom, with the, the wisdom that multiplied bitterness is because why? Brothers and sisters, they still want to enjoy the pleasures of sin that last only for a moment. That's why you cannot separate yourself from those lusts, from the sins. Why? Because you are enjoying the pleasure that comes with indulging in it. As long as you indulge in that sin, guess what? You are the Bible will, will what the laws of God will multiply bitterness to your soul because the law of the most high God will bring judgment, the Lord will bring correction, and you don't you're not gonna take wanna take heed to the correction. Why? Because you are still enjoying the pleasures of sin that will only last for a moment and will cost you the kingdom. You see that? That's the reason why you see brothers are backed out. That's why you see sisters are backed out. Because a lot of you, the problem with a lot of you is that you trust yourself too much. There's nothing that really makes me so mad that I talk to a sister, the sister will say, yes, sir, I'll do this and such and such. But they don't do it. They don't. Sis, you need to apply such and such. Yes, sir, I'll do it. They don't do it. Brothers too, apply X, Y, and Z. Apply, apply this counsel. Yes, say I'll do. They don't do it. That thing, that thing really makes me sick to my stomach. Why? Because you are wasting my time. You're wasting my time because you think you're so special. Because you are what? You are an attention whore. That's the mindset of an attention whore. Because you want to be the center of attention. I hate that thing. Because that means you don't take in this too seriously. You understand? Read that thing again, verse 25. Let me calm down. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 25. Go ahead. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. I need you to put some power in your spirit. Come on. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 25. Read. Right? Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Than to, to chew, than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Because sin is pleasurable. Sin is pleasurable. So guess what you must do? The solution to all these problems right here is this one, this thing right here. Give me that in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. This is the solution, okay? Second Corinthians 5, verse 17. 2 Book of Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Go ahead. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Come on. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You see that thing? Behold, all things have become new. All things. So the old things must be passed away, meaning you have to let those things go. Behold, all things have become new. Everything about yourself must be new. And for that to take place, change must happen. Application of God's laws must take place in your life. You have to apply. There's no, there's no point of you seeking counsel, but you don't apply the counsel. But the reason why you do it, you make it seem like you are doing it so that nobody has to focus on you. But you are, you, you are not fooling me. You're just fooling yourself. You're not fooling certainly not the most high. You understand? So you're not sincere. So you think the Lord is going to be sincere in bringing the spirit of change to your life? No, it's not going to happen. You see that thing? Read again. Come on, 2 Corinthians 5. Read that. 2 Book of Corinthians, chapter 5. 2 Book of Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 16. No, verse 17. Come on, stay, pay attention. Read. Second Book of Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Therefore, Wait. if any man be in Christ, he is uh -huh. a new creature. He is a what? Old, he is a new creature. He is a new creature. Read. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things are become new. So guess what you have to do? You have to apply. In order for things to become new, you have to apply. What must you do? He says, all things are becoming new. Everything about yourself must change. Watch this. 
Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 verse 24. We're going to jump around in this chapter. Read. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 verses 24. Go ahead. For well, wisdom is more moving than any motion. Mm -hmm. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. So now it says wisdom is more moving than any motion because the wisdom of the Lord is supposed to move, is supposed to move you to make changes in your life. That's why it says it's more moving than any motion. She passeth and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness because the laws of God is perfect. Jump down to verse 27. Hmm. You know what? Read verse 25. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 verse 25. Come on. For she is the breath of the power of God. Read. And a pure influence floweth, flowing from the glory of the Almighty. So now wisdom of the most, the, the laws of God is a pure influence. The laws of God is a pure influence. If you don't have a, if you, if you don't have if the laws of God is not affecting you in a what? In a, in a good way, that means you don't have the spirit of joy to apply. Them. You hate what the Bible says. You understand? It says the it says what is a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. The laws of God are supposed to be a pure influence in your life, not a negative influence. Jump down to verse 27. Watch this. And being but one, uh -huh. she can do all things. She can what? She can do all things. She can do all things. That's why it says all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become you. So the wisdom of the Lord can change all things. Read. And being but one, she can do all things and remaining in herself. She maketh all things new. She does what? She maketh all things new. She maketh all things new. All things new. So what wisdom, what King Solomon is saying is the same thing that we read in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Is that she, she can do all things and remaining in herself, she maketh all things new. That's, what the, that's the wisdom of the Lord right there. A pure influence that will what? Do all things in your life, change all things in your life, and make all things new in your life. You see that thing? Read. Come on. And in all ages, entering into holy souls, Read. she maketh them friends of God and prophets. You see what you see that? It says in all ages. It doesn't matter how old you are. That's why our forefather Abraham, 99 years old, the Lord called him. And our forefather Abraham, he set the right example for us. You understand? So it doesn't matter how old or how young you are. The wisdom of the Lord, the most High God will make all things new. So there's no excuses. Okay? Losers make excuses. Winners, they what? They take accountability and change their life and the way they think. That's what the Lord is teaching us right here. You understand? She maketh all things new. So that means everything about yourself must change. The way you dress must change. The way you think, the way you speak, you understand? How you eat must change. You understand? Taking care of your body must change. You see that thing? You, you must start making healthy choices, how you eat, what you eat, when you eat, so on and so forth. You understand? You must go to the doctor, see if you have any diseases in your body. And if the doctor, when the doctor gives you a report back, you must now steps to correct them. You must change your diet. You must start to exercise. You understand? Those are the things that you need to know. But you wanna you wanna wait until you announce that it's time for you to prove a sister or to prove a brother. Now you you go to the doctor. You discover. Wait a minute. I got I got AIDS. I got chlamydia. I've got syphilis. I've got whatever the whatever gonorrhea. Whatever the case may be. So at that point, now what happens next? Now, the sister now has to say, okay, but I, me, I'm not comfortable anymore. Or the brother says, you know what? I, me, I don't, I don't think I want to prove the sister anymore. Because that can happen too. You, you see what I'm saying? 
but you could have resolved this issue way before. Now you could you, you can start now to deal with it, but you don't want to do that. You want to wait when it's time for you to make the biggest decision in your life. Now that's when now you're gonna have to pause, have to wait and say, hey, I can't do this anymore because now I have to deal with this monster. But this whole time you just left it. You didn't do nothing about it. You see what I'm saying? I mean, that's lack of sense. That's an example of lack of sense right there. Okay, go back to where was that? Second Corinthians 5 verse 17. Second book of Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Right? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Come on. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He says, all things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. So guess what? Here's another one. You understand? Your career wise. You realize, okay, you need to what you want, you, you, you're going to be a father. You are going to be a husband. Your month, you're going to be a leader in Israel. All of these things, they require what? They require you to have funds. We, we, that's why we need arms. We need donations because guess what? The little salaries that we're getting, I mean, you know, they, they can take us but so far. You understand? Some of you want to start businesses, but you're lazy. You're not, you don't oh, behave or operate like somebody who wants to run a business. You are lazy. You can't sit down and apply yourself. You, you see that thing? Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiasticus, okay? Give me a record. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 38. Sarah chapter 38, I love this chapter right here. Beautiful chapter, okay? Sarah chapter 38 and verse... Sarah 38 and verse 27. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 38, verse 27. So every carpenter and workmaster that laboreth night and day, and they that cut and cram and crave seals, and are diligent to make great variety and give themselves to counterfeit imagery and watch to finish a work. So now these are men that these are skills now, carpenter, carpenter, webmaster, you understand? They deal with gray, they, they deal with engravings and so forth. You understand? It says, and are diligent to make great variety and give themselves continue to counterfeit image because they are iron men. They make graven images and so forth. You understand? It says, and watch to finish your work. They don't worship these. Don't get it twisted. But these, what, what we're reading here is what? These are skills that we need in the nation. You understand? So guess what? Give me Sarah chapter 18. Watch this. So these are skills. So you have to have a skill. You have to have a skill because it's going to be for the benefit of your nation. You understand? Watch this. Sarah chapter 18. Okay, Ecclesiasticus chapter 18. Let me see. Mm. Let me see if that's what I want. No, no, Sirach 7, Sirach 7, verse 15. Read that. Ecclesiasticus chapter 7, verse 15. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 7, verse 15. Read. Hate not laborers' work, mm. neither husbandry, Come on. which the Most High hath ordained. You see what I say? He says, don't hate laborers' work. So in order for you to be what? To be a carpenter, that's laborers' work. To be a workmaster, that's laborers' work. Today, to be, you want to be a software engineer, you want to be a doctor, you want whatever the, the case may be. He says, don't hate laborers' work. You want to be an entrepreneur, if you hate laborers work, you're not going to be any of those things. You understand? And you're going to grow up to be a bum. So you have to have the mindset to develop skills because our forefathers had skills. How are we able to survive as a nation in the lens of our captivity if we do not have skills to feed our families to survive? You understand? 
So he says, don't hate laborers' work, neither husbandry. That goes into farming and so forth, which the Most High hath ordained. So the Lord ordained it. Watch this, Sirach 10, verse 30. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 30. Mm -hmm. The poor man is honored for his skill. You see that? The poor man, because we're poor, but we are going to be honored for the skills we have. And the same skills that we're learning in, in, in Babylon now, guess what? We get, we, we get to use the same skills to benefit our nation. You understand? We are going to be honored in our nation. We're going to honor our nation. We're going to honor the Lord. And guess what? We're going to bring the same skills to Israel so that we can build our nation and be, and be able to sustain ourselves in the lens of our captivity. Read that thing again. I lost my painting, sir. Sirach 10, verse 30. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 30. Read. The poor man is honored for his skill. Uh -huh. And the rich man is honored for his riches. And the rich man is honored for his riches. So we are not rich. You understand? We're not rich. So guess what? We have to what we have to have skills so we can build together, work together. Okay. So while you brothers are a lot of especially those of you that are not pursuing anybody in the camp, you know, understand you're not proving anybody. Make sure to have those things before you get made, before you prove anybody, make sure that you are actually in order. You can take care of yourself, you know how to budget, you know how to save and so forth, and you improve skills because you still have time to do that. You don't have a lot of distractions in your life. You don't have wife to deal with. You don't have children to deal with. You understand? So you can dedicate a lot of times to me improving yourself, making sure that you are in the scriptures, you improve your personal life also with the scriptures by applying them. Get your skills up, you understand, and so forth. You have to do stuff like that eating healthy, exercising, for knowing how to manage a timetable. What makes you think that you'll be able to manage a timetable when you get married? You, you can't manage it while you are not married, so you're going to get it when you are married now. You will know how to do it. Are you kidding me? That's simple as hell. You understand? That's why this wisdom that multiplied bitterness, because to a simp, it will multiply bitterness. But to a wise man, it, guess what it will do? Give me Proverbs now. Watch this. Give me Proverbs chapter 27, verse 7. To a wise man, it will be this right here. Watch this. Proverbs 27, verse 7. The book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 20, verse 7. Uh -huh. The full soul loatheth any honeycomb. No, no, no. Read it right. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 7. The full soul loatheth and honeycomb. Right. But to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Now, that's a heavy verse right there. Read it again. Read it again. Read it again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 7. The full right. soul loatheth and honeycomb. Mm -hmm. But to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. You see what the Bible is saying? The full soul loatheth in a honeycomb. What is the honeycomb? Remember, the soul that is full, meaning what? I don't need to learn this. I made it already. I know this, I know that, I know this. You simple as hell. That's the dummy right there. Leave them right there in the corner somewhere. It says, the full soul loatheth in honeycomb. What is the honeycomb? Go back to Proverbs 23, I mean 24 verse 13. So we don't lose the thought. We read it earlier on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 13. Go ahead. My son, eat thou honey, mm -hmm. because it is good. Come on. And the honeycomb, which is sweet to thy taste. The honeycomb, which is sweet to thy taste, is explained in verse 14, which is the knowledge of wisdom that will be to your soul. So now, the honeycomb is the Bible, is the knowledge of wisdom. That honeycomb, you understand, that honeycomb has honey. So the honeycomb is the Bible. The honey is this understanding of the scriptures. You see that thing? Now go back to where he was at. Proverbs 27 verse 7 again. 
Proverbs chapter 27, verse 7. Wait. The full soul loaded and honeycomb. Mm -hmm. But to the hungry soul, every better thing is sweet. You see that thing? The full soul loaded. The honeycomb is the Bible. You understand? Because the honeycomb is the Bible which produces honey. You're going to find honey out of that because bees create that. But to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. The knowledge that multiplied bitterness to them is not bitter. It's sweet to them. Why? Because they, they know that it's going to change their life and their life is going to change. They're going to be better for themselves, for their families, and for the nation. That's the wise, that's the hungry soul. The hungry soul, guess what? The, the, what, the wisdom that multiplied bitterness to a fool that doesn't want, want, that, that doesn't want to be taught, guess what? Is going to be sweet to him. Go back to Sarah 21, verse 12. We're coming back here. Don't lose Proverbs 27, verse 7. That's a beautiful precept right there. Sarah 21, verse 12. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes 21, verse 12. He that keepeth the book of Ecclesiastes 21, verse 12. He that is not wise will not be taught. Mm -hmm. But there is a wisdom which multiplies bitterness. So now to the fool, which is the unwise, guess what? They are not going to be taught. So the wisdom that comes out is going to multiply bitterness. They're not going to be sweet because why? They are full. But are they full? They, are they full of the honeycomb or the, 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 the honey that comes from the honeycomb? No, they are full of BS. Yes. They are full of doo-doo. They are full of BS. That's why they load the honeycomb. But to the wise brother, to the wise sister, guess what? Everything that is bitter is going to taste sweet to them. Go back to Proverbs 27, verse 7. The book of Proverbs 27, verse, verse 7. Go ahead. The full soul loadeth an honeycomb. Mm -hmm. But to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. You see that? But to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. To the hungry, to the, to the soul that is hungry, the soul. Remember, it says to the hungry soul. He didn't say to the hungry stomach, the hungry soul. The brother or sister that are thirsty for this truth, guess what? The things that are bitter in the mouth of the untaught, to the hungry soul is going to be sweet to them. Now, that's some heavy stuff right there. Meditate or chew the car on that, okay? I'm going to end the class right there. Let's break bread, okay? In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. First book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak, and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.